I am just taking questions here and there. Nirma University, Ahmedabad, you have any questions? Uh, what is different between conservation equation and non-conservation equation? Okay, the question is what is the difference between conservation equation and non-conservation equation? Okay, actually we will get back to you. I, all that I will tell is whatever the form of, there is nothing like non-conservation equation. There is nothing like that, that is first thing. Second thing is that we have conservative form and non-conservative form. We will write those equations in the non-conservative and conservative form and get back to you. This is a good question. I would request you to put it in Moodle. Sudhir, please note down. There is, there is nothing like non-conservative equation. The only the equation, it is conservative or non-conservative form. That is, to put it in a very simple terms, you can see these terms getting conserved in one form and in another form, you cannot directly see them conserved. Nevertheless, the equations are conservation of mass, momentum and energy. That, we, that they cannot violate, any or none of these equations can get violated. Is that okay? Any other questions? Shown on page number 64, can you sh uh, explain that significance of the arrow you have shown in uh, with uh, written that pipe center line? 64 of which convection 1, convection 2, convection 3? Convection 2. What is the significance of this figure? That is the question. See, as I said in the previous transparency, we have u plus, we have y plus. Of course, they are not u and y directly the dimensional form. u plus is u by u tau and u tau is square root of tau wall by rho. Incidentally, u tau is also having the unit of velocity and u plus is indeed non-dimensional and y plus is also non-dimensional y u tau by nu. y u tau is meter squared per second and nu is meter squared per second. All that what people found is, of course, this can be, although it has been stated and said that as if it has come from empirical, it can be derived from fundamentals. You can see this derivation in Professor Bejan's book, Convective Heat Transfer book. So, or even in Sebastian Bradshaw, boundary layers by Sebastian Bradshaw. The point here is, if I take any measurement of shear stress along the boundary layer, Okay, at different y locations, if I take those measurements and non-dimensionalize my velocity and shear stress in these lines, the profile is essentially going to follow initially linear in viscous sublayer and then logarithmic in turbulent boundary layer and also in buffer layer. That is what we are trying to say. Over to you, if you have any specific question in this, I would like to take up that question. The pipe center line and the arrow you have shown there, can can I know significance of that? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, okay, the question asked by one of the participants is that, what is the significance of arrow mark in the pipe center line? That means, pointer, pointer. the significance of this arrow mark, this only means that I am going towards pipe center line. Okay, this is, this is the pipe wall. This is the pipe wall for internal flows or for a flow or a flat, flat plate, this is y equal to 0 just above the flat plate or just on the pipe wall. As I move away from here, I am moving into the boundary layer, first viscous sub layer, then buffer layer, then turbulent boundary layer. This is towards the pipe center line if it is pipe case. Is that okay? VIT Pune. Any questions? Uh, my question is uh, while 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 non-dimensional the uh, momentum equation may it be steady or unsteady we end up with one non-dimensional parameter that is one one by re on the other side of the equation. While non-dimensionalizing this uh, energy equation we have assumed that flow is a steady and we have ended up with the okay. non-dimensional okay. parameters okay. like re, pr and Eckhart number. Okay. Now if we consider the unsteady uh, energy equation, do we lead to some other parameter? Yes. Uh, See, non -dimensional. one of the participants question is that if we take, if we take steady flow, I get Re as a, as a non-dimensional number in momentum equation. If I take steady energy equation, I get the non-dimensional number as a Reynolds number and Prandtl number in energy equation. See, there is, I do not have to assume unsteady. Yes. 
if I do not assume the flow as steady, I get another non dimensional number what is called as Fourier number, okay? whether it is a momentum equation or energy equation. Most of the times as you and I know, we handle steady flows. So, that is the reason we do not consider that Fourier number, uh, sorry not uh, what is it? Froud number, Froud. sorry the non dimensional number is Froud number. The if you take unsteady flow irrespective whether it is momentum equation or energy equation, you get what is called as Froude number, but I would think this is a very good question. So, for unsteady flows we get non dimensional number as Froude number in momentum equation, okay. but in energy equation we end up getting Reynolds and Prandtl. The point is as long as the flow is steady, you get Reynolds number in momentum equation and Reynolds and Prandtl in energy equation. If you take unsteady, you take you get Froude number as the non dimensional number for the unsteady term. Okay. Uh, I think that is a good question. Then you may ask me what is Froude number. Okay. I do not have right now the Froude number definition, it goes something like this u squared upon square root of L g. I will I will elaborate this question, I will elaborate the Froude number definition in the next session. Is that okay? Professor Sevatkar. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. NIT Trichy, any questions? So, in boundary layer uh, formation, we have uh, discussed flow over a smooth flat plate. If our surface has any, um, uh, if, if our surface is, uh, we have any surface toughness factor or uh, it is not a smooth surface, such a case is uh, what would be? Okay, one of the questions is if the surface is roughened by rougheners what it would be. Okay, we have answered this several times and we will be re dealing with this in internal flows again. Nevertheless, I have been telling time and again if the surface is roughened, if the surface roughness height is such that it breaks the laminar sublayer and which is what we generally want to do. If that is the case, my surface would have the boundary layer completely turbulent. That means, the heat transfer coefficient will be very high, because my friction factor has gone up, because my shear, st shear stress at the wall is essentially minus rho u prime v prime bar. So, laminar sublayer is not going to exist, it is going to be completely turbulent. Is that okay, professor? Sir, so one more question. Yeah. So, uh, in, uh, in cricket, uh, during fast bowling, uh, compared to uh, England and Australia, uh, uh, our cases uh, the swing is very less in Indian conditions. Uh, is there any role of uh, boundary layer uh, formation there? The question asked is yeah, when we play cricket, <coughs> the swing uh, in India is much lower than the swing in England. Uh, that I do not know the answer why in England it is more, maybe because of the wet condition, but all that I can definitely say is. What is essentially happening in the ball is that while there is a linear motion, there is also a rotational motion. Because of this rotational motion, there is a slight lift generated which is what is called as Magnus effect. This is what we study in fundamentals of fluid mechanics. So, in fact, few people in early days, they wanted to use this Magnus, Magnus effect and move the ships, but they failed. But this Magnus effect is the one which is actually generating the lift for swinging of our tennis ball. Now, if you ask me the question why in England swings more than in India, I think it is it is something to do with humidity or the wetness. So, that is essentially what is different is the density, density I think, but it is a very specific question why I have not answered one part of your question that is why in England it swings more than why than in India, I am hand waving, but I will come back to you. This is a very good question, but there is a lift. You have an answer? Yeah, yeah Professor good. Atul wants to answer this. Why do not you come in? Yeah, basically, your question is uh, um, the effect of seam conditions. Uh, uh, if you remember, if you play any of, the, I mean, if you watch any of the, these cricket games, if you see the bowler, uh, he tries to hide one side of the ball. Okay? So, that one side uh, is uh, hidden 
just because they do not want to show the condition of the ball on that so what they do they shine the one side and they roughen the other side that is why you have these uh, incidences of ball tempering and other things using your nails and uh, 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 the the caps of uh, water bottles so they try to roughen the other surface okay so when you have seeming conditions the role of boundary layer or the effect of seeming conditions on the boundary on the ball on the two sides of the ball would be different okay so uh, the boundary layer formation on the roughened side would act in a different manner as compared to the smoothened side okay so that is why you have the swing uh, the ball tends to move towards the roughened side okay so i mean seeming conditions as Pro professor prabhu has told uh, the wet conditions compared i mean in england compared to india they definitely play a role but if you have the condition of the ball which is equally good on both sides the seeming effect will be would be subsided so in order to uh, have the swing of the ball you need to temper or you need to have different conditions on either side of the ball see yeah. oh, on either side, side of the seam Thanks, professor. Thanks, professor. Kolhapur Institute of Technology. Any questions? So, in case of uh, oil bearings, okay, the viscosity is going to change with respect to temperature. Okay. But do we take into consideration the mu value is constant or is it changing with temperature as a function of temperature in case of these equations? Yeah. Okay. So the question asked is by one of the participants in bearings, whether it is ball or roller or whatever. Whether the viscosity varies because the temperature in the bearing changes as it is being used because of the friction, the temperature of the oil inside the bearings will keep changing. So, whether the viscosity we have to whether we should we be taking the variation of the viscosity with temperature or not in the set of the equations? Yes, one has to take the variation of the properties with temperature. In fact, as we go along in convection, we are going to see that there is significant influence of the property variations with the temperature when we are calculating the heat transfer coefficient. So, what you asked in uh, bearings, yes viscosity variation with temperature has to be taken into account in my set of equations. Okay. Next question please. Thank you sir. Okay. Next question, please. Sir, one more question sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, we discussed the universal profile yeah. for uh, flow over the plate and uh, flow in the pipe. Can we apply that universal profile in agitated vessel? No. So, the question asked is one of the participants question is that can I apply this universal profile whatever has been taught this u plus y plus uh, the viscous sub layer, buffer layer and the turbulent boundary layer. It is we said that it is applicable for flat flow over a flat plate and for flow in internal pipes is it applicable for agitated flows? No. See that is why I said this is only applicable for these two class of flows because that is what it has been tested for. Generally for any other spe special or specific problem this is not applicable as I said even for jet impinging flows for example, this is not applicable. People are struggling or trying to come up with some other profile, but that is not working. The, so, they have tried at least to the extent possible I know to the best of my knowledge velocity profile they have succeeded, but not for temperature. In fact, we have similar temperature profile also which we will be studying little later, but universal velocity profile they have slightly succeeded for impinging flows, but that profile looks different from this. So, that is why then it is not going to be universal at all. So, there is nothing like I mean we should not be calling this profile as universal. So, the point is for each class of a problem the stress distribution with velocity is going to be different. So, to answer your question for agitated flows this is not applicable. Okay. So, now we will stop this question answer session and professor Arun is going to teach us from where he had stopped. We had introduced or come up with the non dimensional form of the equation. A quick 2 minute recap why was this done? We will see, we will go back to the dimensional form of the equation. This is the dimensional form of the energy equation. 
please do not see this in isolation, see this in conjunction with the x y momentum equation and the continuity equation. And we said that there are four variables of interest that is u, v, pressure and temperature. So, we have four equations, one continuity equation, one x momentum equation, y momentum equation and the energy equation. So, four equation, four unknowns, this problem is a uh, nice close form problem. Of course, whether we can solve it directly for all situations, that is a different question. Then we said, this uh, energy equation is nothing but first law of conservation of energy and then this uh, first law of thermodynamics and from here we can derive the diffusion or conduction equation when this term u and v is go to 0, pressure work goes to 0, viscous dissipation goes to 0. That means, when there is no flow associated with the problem, you can transform this equation to the transient 2 D conduction equation with constant properties. We saw that also and then we said let us non dimensionalize these using a certain set of non dimensional variables. These are chosen with an idea that the non dimensional parameter that is obtained x star, y star, u star, v star, p star and non dimensional temperature is all varying between 0 and 1 a general rule of thumb. What this L is, what this V is all those things will be problem specific situation specific to the problem. Whether it is average velocity, free stream velocity or any other velocity, whether it is the length of the pipe, diameter of the pipe, length of the <coughs> flat plate so on and so forth that depends. We said in fluid mechanics we have u local and u infinity as the two variables, I mean two quantities related to velocity. We do not have anything like u surface whereas, in, in heat transfer you are going to have T s in addition to a local temperature and T infinity. Therefore, we have to encompass or take into account all these three quantities to define a non dimensional temperature. Okay. After all this algebra which we hope you do it later today, you come up with a nice non dimensional form of the equation which looks like this and we said that this Eckert number which is representing the interconversion from kinetic energy to heat, heat <coughs> becomes dominant in case of high speed flows, typically because you are talking of this ratio. Okay. When T s minus T infinity is large or C p is large also these things go uh, small and therefore, we tend to drop this term and this term viscous dissipation term and pressure work terms are neglected, they are not equal to 0, they are neglected in our normal heat transfer problems that we are going to do in this course. Okay, that does not mean these are unimportant, these become important in high speed flows. Somebody I had a question on, uh, if I have a unsteady term, what is a non dimensional number? That is going to affect this part also. In fact, if you go to aerodynamics, same energy equation, this term will become far more important okay, or this term will be of comparable order of magnitude. And somebody had asked in the Moodle also, can uh, this, uh, I do not remember this thing about uh, high speed or something like that. We had mentioned, I had mentioned about this Eckert number which is valid for high speed. One question in the Moodle that, uh, when can I take the flow as compressible and when can I take the flow as incompressible and one of you had answered also very rightly that is for all Mach numbers less than 0.3 uh, the flow can be considered as incompressible and for all Mach numbers greater than 0.3 the flow can be considered as compressible and of course, why, why Mach number less than 0.3 can be considered as incompressible that is because essentially the density variations that is delta rho by rho the density variations is less than 10 percent for all Mach numbers less than 0.3 and for Mach numbers greater than 0.3 the density variations become significant. Density variation is what we have been telling for compressibility into account. So, for compressibility and incompressibility other criterion which can be taken into account which is what usually is done is Mach number. Mach number less than 0.3 is incompressible and greater than 0.3 is compressible because density variations become significant for all Mach numbers greater than 0 0.3. Okay. So, now what we are saying is, uh, okay, you have a non dimensional energy equation, what is the use of all this? What are we going to get at the end of this? So, before we understand what we are going to get, 
let us just uh, sorry, let us just look at these three equations that we have okay this is the continuity x momentum and the energy equation and y momentum equation if you see what is the y momentum equation for those of you can write down y momentum equation the rho v d u by d x plus sorry rho u d v by d x uh, rho v d v by d y equal to mu d square mu d square v by d x square plus d square v by d y square minus t p by d y right now yeah, minus d p by d y. Okay. So, what happens to this for flow uh, when we have this, this kind of a situation you are talking of steady incompressible laminar flow of a fluid with constant properties. This is a set of equations and the boundary conditions. So, at x is equal to 0, what is x is equal to 0? x is uh, x is equal to 0 represents let us say I have flow over a flat plate. This is my coordinate axis x is equal to 0 represents this point. So, when the flow is not or has just come in to the region of interest velocity u at all y's is u infinity free stream velocity temperature at x is equal to 0 for all y's is equal to t infinity. So, this fluid has not started to flow over the flat plate it is just coming into that region of interest. Okay. Second thing y equal to 0 y equal to 0 represents the flat plate surface x axis this is the no slip condition u is 0 v is 0 and temperature at all y is for uh, temperature at y equal to 0 for all x is equal to the surface temperature. So, for this surface if T s is greater than T infinity I can always say that velocity u v both are equal to 0 at wall and T is equal to T s at wall. So, this is what is given by the second boundary condition. Third boundary condition is y tends to infinity. What is this y tends to infinity? It represents the region far away from the influence of the solid surface. Okay, region far away. What is this so called far away? This so called far away refers to a region much beyond the boundary layer. So, if I have a boundary layer that is formed <coughs> the region beyond that y, y tending to infinity I will have the e, uh, governing uh, boundary conditions as u at all x locations at y tending to infinity is u infinity. So, the fluid does not know does not remember anything about seeing a flat plate somewhere far below it. Temperature is also unaffected t at y tending to infinity equal to t infinity. Are these enough? Are these enough to solve? That is what we have to see. We have u in terms of x, you have in u in terms of y. So, d squared u by d y squared is there. So, two boundary conditions in y, I have two boundary conditions in y. One boundary condition for u in x, I have that one boundary condition for v in, in terms of y I have that then the remaining are all related to temperature one two three conditions for the temperature. So, this is a well post situation what happens to the y momentum equation why was that not considered it I, I want to leave this as an exercise for all of you what will happen to the y momentum equation is should I leave it yeah you will see that <coughs> terms will get cancelled off, 
will get dp by dy equal to 0 if you, i urge all of you to try this if you don't get this and you and are unable to proceed please ask us or please put this on model we will rep reply to all of you together okay but y momentum equation simply is going to vanish okay so it is not going to give you any information which is going to be relevant except the fact that dp by dy equal to 0 and what does dp by dy equal to 0 mean that also you should interpret partial derivative of something with respect to a variable is 0 means pressure is not a function of y so that is something which you will have to interpret and then you will reduce you will be able to appreciate that we have only three equations uh, we urge all of you to do, write down the y momentum equation and please do this mathematics okay so i think it is there in the uh, tutorial today okay so we will cover that we are not going to do it here explicitly so with the same non dimensional parameters that was used for the energy equation let us non dimensionalize the continuity and momentum continuity as we quickly saw it it would have been v u star is equal to u so i will get v i will get l here so v by l d u star by d x star plus v by l d v star by d v star is equal to 0 that l by v goes off momentum equation u star u d u d x i will just spend half a minute writing this because people get overwhelmed very easily when i non dimensionalize this is v u star d by d x will have a l d x star d u star will have another v d u star here okay so this becomes v squared by l u star d u star by d x star i like to keep the functional form of the term the same u d u by d x u star d u star by d x just a change in the nomenclature on paper but what is coming in front of it is this v squared by l so when i do that for all the terms what do i get the similar term for the <coughs> similar uh, form for the second term is v d u by d y will essentially become v d u star by d y star so that, that i will just put it here v d u by d y becomes l sorry um, yeah so v is equal to v star l sorry 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 v times v star d u star v l d y star so this will be v squared by l v star d u star by d y star essentially the same functional form with this v squared by l sitting in front then the right hand side i have mu d squared u by d y squared so that is going to be taken care like this mu d squared u by d y squared is going to be mu d by d y second time I am going to do this. So, I would have d by d y of d u by d y. This is mu y is what let us recall y star is y by l. So, this is what I am going to use. This is v d u star by l d y star and again I would have here l d y star okay i hope all of you are with me here <coughs> so i will get this as keeping this in mind i will get mu v l squared d squared u star by d y star squared something in front the mu is also there the functional form is essentially the same mu d squared u by d y square has become mu v by l squared so on and so forth and let me go back to the last thing d p by d x will be non dimensionalized in this form d 
d p by d x is nothing but pressure was non dimensionalized as rho v squared d p star this is l d x star. <coughs> so, if I keep all these terms together in the non dimensional form, <coughs> I would have write it one by one v squared by l u star d u star by d x star plus v squared by l v star d u star by d y star equal to mu v by l squared d squared u star by d y star squared minus d p by d x which will give me minus rho v squared by l d p star by d x star. So, if I v that this is divided by v squared by l I hope all of you can see that. So, when I do the jugglery cancel of v squared by l on this side I would be left with u star d u star by d x star plus v star d u star by d y star equal to l l cancels v cancels here I would get a mu l v do is rho I think I have missed somewhere let me just go back Yeah, there is a row here. Sorry about that. There is a row which is there. So, this row keeps coming all the time. So, there is a row here, there is a row here, there is a row here. So, that will be there, and I would have here minus v squared by L cancels off. So, I will be left with a row dp star by dx star. Okay, divide through by rho, I would have rho here, this will cancel off. And what am I left with? I am left with this form rho v l by mu is my reciprocal of Reynolds number. So, what do I see? u star d u star by d x star plus v star d u star by d y star is equal to 1 over Reynolds number based on some l some characteristic dimension which is not volume by surface area d squared u star by d y star squared minus d p star by d x star. Okay. So, what was my original equation? My original equation which was not before this was rho u bring this rho down you get u d u by d x plus v d u by d y is equal to nu d squared u by d y squared minus 1 by rho d p by d x and that is what I have here in the non dimensional form as is the left hand side is same except for the stars. I have 1 by Reynolds number which is something which is very important and d p by d x is just left as it is and we have done the same thing for the uh, for the energy equation and we showed this just before we went for t that it is of this form. If I neglect the viscous dissipation and the pressure work term, my energy equation re reduces to u star d t star by d x star plus v star d t star by d y star equal to 1 by r e l p r d square t star by d y star squared. Please keep these two in mind. This is probably the heart of convection. I cannot overemphasize this because now if you look at these two equations, forget whether the independent variable is u, I mean sorry, dependent variable is u or t. Look at the left hand side. If I cover the right hand side, look at the left hand side, identical instead of u here I have u star, I have t star point sorry instead of u star, I have t star otherwise it is exactly the same thing. 
left hand side is the same very good. If d p by d x went off to 0, that means I throw this off here, I have d squared u star by d y star square, d square t star by d y star square. This is just the constant coefficient in front of it. Prandtl number let us say it is equal to 1 for, for just for the sake of simplicity, it is identical. right? So, let me for the sake of being repetitive, I will just bring this up here again. The functional form of the governing equation, non-dimensional governing equation looks identical when d p by d x is made to 0 and p r is made to, to be equal to 1, essentially identical form. I have non-dimensionalized the governing equation, so I have to non-dimensionalize the boundary condition, which is a matter of, which is very straightforward. All of you can do it. X equal to zero, x star equal to zero, y tending to infinity, y star tending to in infinity. T, you just put it appropriately, you will get ones and zeros. So that is also non-dimensionalized here. Okay? What am I saying? Because of all this, is something which is so 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 important is the following. Let us just go back here. The same equation I have recast when, do not read all this Chilton Colburn, do not read all that for now. d p by d x when it is equal to 0 uh, and Prandtl number is approximately equal to 1. The non-dimensional momentum equation and the non-dimensional energy equation are identical in its functional form. If I have an identical equation, differential equation and the boundary conditions are identical, the solution is also identical. So, what it means? Now, if I just go back step by step to the boundary condition here, u star at 0 comma y star is 1, where is this coming from? This free stream velocity. I have another thing here, free stream temperature. This essentially is u star becomes 1, because I have non-dimensionalized using u infinity, which is the representative capital V that we chose. Okay, that instead of capital V, you can use u infinity, which is the maximum possible velocity in the flow. This T star by definition is going to become equal to 1, am I right? T minus T s divided by T infinity minus T s. Go back here, when in doubt, go back to this t infinity minus t s divided by t infinity minus t s gives me 1. So, non-dimensional temperature will be 1, that is precisely what is given here, these two. <coughs> okay. Then, what else is there? u star at x star 0, t star at x star 0 is 0, this one, x becomes x star here also. 0 remains 0, T s minus T s you will get in the numerator. So, that ratio is going to become equal to 0. Non-dimensional temperature is equal to 0 for this boundary condition. This one, then remaining 3 are here, y tends to infinity, <coughs> this one, all x. So, x star infinity 1, because this is again u infinity, x star infinity, this is going to be 0, uh, sorry x star infinity, this is also going to be 1. T, uh, the ratio is, this is T infinity and the ratio is T infinity minus T s divided by T infinity minus T s. So, that is going to be 1. V was non-dimensionalized by again by the same scale. So, this will be x star 0 equal to 0. So, what am I getting here? I have three conditions for u, u star, u star, u star, t star, t star, t star. Forget the v part for a minute. These are identical. Am I right? So, when Prandtl number is of the order 1, of the order means roughly equal to. Okay? when d p by d x is negligibly small, can be neglected or made equal to 0, then 
the non dimensional i am going i am repeating again the equations are not the same the non dimensional x momentum equation and the non dimensional energy equation have the same functional form and the non dimensional boundary conditions are also identical okay so this is probably the heart of what we have studied we are going to study the non dimensional equations are of the same form the non dimensional boundary conditions are identical that means logically i know that the solution nature of the functional form of the solution is going to be the same i think this cannot be any better explained because you take any differential equation d squared y by dx square equal to constant or d square t by dx square equal to constant you will get the same functional form same thing here with the same boundary conditions this equation and this equation when in the non dimensional form are identical therefore my non dimensional velocity distribution will be identical to the non dimensional temperature distribution okay i will restate this non dimensional velocity distribution would be equal to the non dimensional temperature distribution it's not written here but please write this down and take this away with you i think this is something which our students at an undergraduate level are not taught it is not appreciated and what we say some reynolds analogy is given write short notes on reynolds analogy this sort of a question is asked in an exam write short notes on reynolds analogy well, what is reynolds analogy it is essentially this part it is telling you this when the non dimensional energy and momentum equations with identical non dimensional boundary conditions are there that means it is of this form v star something in front this is the nature let me go back here <coughs> this is the nature i have written on the white board just brackets the square bracket can be u or t let me call it a a a this a can be u star or t star okay when prandtl number is approximately equal to 1 and dp by dx star equal to 0 the the form of the equations non dimensional equations are the same boundary conditions are identical it means non dimensional temperature and velocity distribution u star and t star are this is something which we have to carry with us at the end of heat transfer convection introduction this is what the student will have to carry what does this mean it has far 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 reaching implications what does that mean let us see here when reynolds number why, what is this use why is this done this is essentially done because i want non dimensionalization gives me this freedom of collapsing multiple variables l v t infinity mu alpha into two simple non dimensional number reynolds and prandtl number that is why we are interested in non dimensionalization okay that apart what we are saying is this when i have the non dimensional momentum equation which is given by this okay solution of this two equations is going to give me u v okay and p also because p we have absorbed in the y momentum equation already so u star which is the non dimensional x component of the velocity is obviously 
going to be a function of what? It is going to be a function of Reynolds number, local uh, R E L, it is going to be a function of x star, it is going to be a function of y star, correct? Because I want u d square t by uh, d square uh, y by d x square plus d square y uh, sorry d square f by d x square plus d square f by d y square f is going to be a function of x and y. Same thing here u is going to be a function of x star y star and this Reynolds number that is what I am writing here. So, in general this is going to be the relationship in general T star non dimensional temperature is going to be function of same thing x star y star R e L and there is one P r sticking there some constant which is there that also is going to influence the temperature distribution. So, just look at these two I am going to flip back and forth between these two identical solution form. What does it tell me? If I fix the location, if I fix the wall as the location y equal to 0, why wall? Why not y equal to um, 2 centimeter from the wall? It is because y equal to 0 represents a very important condition for us. Shear stress is evaluated at the wall. Okay, that shear stress is given by what? Mu d u by d y. So, if I fix y, that means y star is fixed, this is no longer a variable of concern. So, I can write this d u star by d y star is essentially mu v by l, right? because I am non dimensionalizing u. So, d u star will be v d u star, y will be l d y star at y star equal to 0. That means, this is going to be some functional form of x star and r e l, because y is gone in has been eaten up. So, mu v by l is what again? Uh, mu v by l, I can recast this multiply divide and do something and get it in terms of Reynolds number, we will see that. C f x coefficient of friction is therefore, our definition 1 half rho v squared that is in the denominator tau. So, tau is mu v by l divided by rho v squared by 2 f of x star r e l and this is nothing but 2 divided by Reynolds number function. What does this tell me? It is so important, so important, so elegant. Coefficient of friction for a case with d p by d x equal to 0 is nothing but a function of the local position and the local Reynolds number. Thus, coefficient of friction can be for a given geometry can be expressed in terms of the Reynolds number and the dimensionless space variable local position x star. x star is nothing but x, right. So, x star alone instead of being expressed in terms of v rho etcetera. This is so important. I do not know how much more to emphasize this coefficient of friction is a function of this. Now, people had asked questions, you know what happens to the boundary layer thickness as you move along the length of the plate, why should it increase? This is the answer. This is coefficient of friction, we can do a similar thing for boundary layer thickness and you will see it is a strong function of Reynolds number. Reynolds number is what defined in terms of the local location so that is going to increase. Now, let us not forget that we have to look this always with the temperature distribution non dimensional. So, non dimensional temperature distribution we got from this, how did we get this? Just by looking at this equation, T star is the dependent variable, it is dependent on x star, y star, R e L and P r that is what I have written that is here. Heat transfer coefficient was defined first lecture minus k of fluid d t by d y at the wall divided by T s minus T infinity. This on non dimensionalization is going to give me d t by d d y would be minus k. I will just do this because this is important. So, I will just do this very quickly. H is equal to minus k d t by d y at y equal to 0 divided by T s minus T infinity. This is going to be minus k T infinity minus T s times d t star 
divided by L d y star. I hope I am doing this right. Y equal to 0 translates to y star equal to 0, this divided by T s minus T infinity. Cancels off, there is a minus sign already sitting there. So, it will become plus, minus sign is already sitting there. This is T infinity minus T s, this is T s minus T infinity. So, there is this is going to become plus. So, h is equal to one of the most important findings k d t star by d y star at y star equal to 0. What is this k? k of f. Okay. Now, one more step and we are away from something which has been bothering us so much. Take this L and K on the other side, H L by K fluid. What is this? Nusselt number. Let me just go back here. This is what we had. This I recast in this form. Nusselt number, therefore, is d t star by d y star at y star equal to 0. Far reaching implications. Just go back one step. C f f is nothing but non dimensional wall shear stress that is equal to 2 by r e f of x r e l. Basically, what am I doing here? Here also, I have taken the derivative of temperature with respect to y and evaluated it at y equal to 0 or y star equal to 0. So, this derivative no longer is a function of y star, is this derivative is going to be some g 2 times x g 2 function of x star r e p r. Now, all the questions, all the correlations in the world that have come for force convection. This has to be the functional form. Nusselt number is going to be a function of the local Reynolds number, which involves the position x star and the Prandtl number associated with the fluid. Now, our UG curriculum, where you are given a bunch of formulae and student have to memorize each and every formulae associated with a geometry there is no need to memorize anything. Okay. In fact, that is a stupid way of testing. You should give all the formulae the student should be asked to choose. You give force, free convection, mixed everything, does not matter. The student, if he is smart enough, will choose that for a force convection problem, the, fu uh, the functional form of Nusselt number has to be R e and P r alone. It will not have anything else. Okay. That is testing. Okay. So, Nusselt number, which is equivalent to a non-dimensional temperature gradient at the wall. This is the definition of Nusselt number. What is C f x? Non-dimensional wall shear stress. Non-dimensional wall shear stress. This is non-dimensional temperature gradient at the wall. Both are quantities evaluated at the wall. Both are derivatives with respect to y but both are non dimension. We are not saying d t by d y or d u by d y. We are saying non dimensional velocity gradient, non dimensional temperature gradient. Now, let us say why is this important? Why, what, why, are, why, why am I marrying these two again and again? It is because one step before this we said, if the governing non dimensional governing equations are same, identical in form and the non dimensional boundary conditions are identical the functional form, the distribution of the u star and t star are identical. If the distribution is identical, then the derivatives are also going to be identical, then the derivative evaluated at the wall is going to be identical, except for the constants which are associated. I am going to say for sure that the non-dimensional temperature gradient at the wall 
and the non dimensional wall shear stress distribution or C f x coefficient of friction is going to have a similar form okay. and that is what is explained by write short notes on Reynolds analogy. This is Reynolds analogy that is this Nusselt number how, how did this come? This came from just these two Nusselt number is G 2 of x R e L P L P R this is F 3 of x R e this one these two are equivalent are equal because the non dimensional temperature. I am not saying bear in mind students come back and ask is velocity distribution temperature distribution the same? No, the non dimensional velocity distribution the non dimensional temperature profile are the same are identical because boundary conditions are identical governing equation is identical assuming P r equal to 1 and d p by d x equal to 0. This thing is called as Reynolds analogy. What does this tell me? If I know the coefficient of friction, fluid mechanics experiments are relatively easy to do compared to heat transfer. If I know this and if all the conditions that were used in this derivation are satisfied, then I can get local heat transfer distribution if I know the local coefficient of friction. If I know the velocity gradients at the wall at different location, then hopefully I can translate that to local heat transfer coefficients by this so called Reynolds analogy. So, this is something which we have to say again and again. Nusselt number is equivalent to the dimensionless temperature gradient at the surface and therefore, we say all correlations typically will have this functional form. Now, let us just quickly go back to that transparency on Nusselt number that we had uh, convection 1 let me just up and here you will see this Nusselt number. We wrote it we did not we quickly did not do this transparency n u is h l c by k we wrote it just like that. Now, we have shown n u is h l c by k just go back here h l by k we have shown that from dimensional analysis and what is it? It is not something which is a non dimensional number which just comes out of air. In fact, you cannot calculate this because the, the actual aspect actual thing that you do is calculate Nusselt number first by using Reynolds and Prandtl number. From getting Reynolds and Prandtl number you use the appropriate correlation get Nusselt number then use the definition of Nusselt number from here and calculate h. It is not the other way given h calculate Nusselt number no that is not the nature of problem. The problem is the other way calculate Nusselt number from Reynolds Prandtl and then calculate h from knowing the Nusselt number. So, this is essentially the definition heat transfer through the fluid layer will be by convection when the fluid involves some motion and conduction when it is motionless essentially this is the definition. So, Nusselt number represents enhancement of heat transfer through a fluid layer as a result of convection relative to the conduction larger the Nusselt number more effective is convection n u equal to 1 for a fluid layer then the heat transfer is by pure conduction. Okay. So, this I think will now correlate marry everything that you had all questions hopefully which you had relative to this Nusselt number business hopefully are understood answered. Of course, we are definitely going to take other questions it is not that we are not going to take. Let us quickly one last slide we will just complete that and I will hand it over to Professor Prabhu. So, this is Reynolds analogy similarly there is what is called a Stanton number which is essentially a relationship between C f x and see this is C f x R e L by 2 is Nusselt number and then the Stanton number is de defined like this. So, I put these two here because Nusselt number is a function of R e P r you get this Stanton number and this forms the crux of what we call as Reynolds analogy u star is equal to t star d u star by d y star at y equal to 0 or y star equal to 0 is d t star by d y star at y star equal to 0 and this one. Okay. So, for laminar flow over a flat plane these are some kind of correlations that you have seen. So, anyway we are not going to detail go into details over this one word of caution d p by d x star is equal to 0 was a necessary condition for the 
non dimensional equations to be identical in form. For a pipe flow, there has to be a pressure gradient along the flow direction if any flow has to occur. So, in that case, we cannot apply this Reynolds analogy business to this kind of pipe flow problems. That is a word of caution. Brute force do not try to apply it everywhere. Please understand under what limiting laminar flow condition this was there d p star by d x star was equal to 0, that was the limiting condition. Okay?